strangling vine, or Sinancum rusicum, is an invasive plant which is also known as a swallowwort or pale swallowwort, a part of the Pocene family, or more commonly known as the dogbane family. Members of this family are native to European, Asian, African, Australian, and American tropics, subtropics, and with some temperate members. This vine looks like any other vine, except for a few features. The leaves are larger when they are closer to the stem and decrease in size as they move away from the stem. The buds of this flower are pointed to an apex. Also, the petals, when unopened, are twisted. When the flower is open, it is a five-parted flower and has a diameter of five to seven millimeters, so very small. The flower is purple-brown to a dark purple, small like an umbrella cluster, at the tips of the stems of the upper branches of this vine. It can also be in different shades. It can also be in bright white. The seed pods are slender and four to six centimeters each, or an inch and a half to two and one fourth of an inch. Brought us near the base and tapered to a slender tip, opening along the side, releasing many small, flat, brownish seeds with a long white silky parachute that can produce up to 28,000 seeds per square meter. The seeds are easily spread by the wind, and new plants can grow from the fragments, making it very difficult to destroy. This vine is a twinning vine that grows to heights of 60 centimeters to 200 centimeters, or 2 feet to 6 feet. The roots of a pale swallowwort are thick, while a regular swallowwort are thin but tapered down to almost nothing. Stems are found intertwined in dense patches of plants that overwhelm and crowd out native plants and young trees, preventing forest regeneration. They will grow onto other plants when they are alone in order to structurally support themselves. Dog strangling vine prefers open sunny areas, but it can grow in well-lit light in the shade. Leaves and roots may be toxic. Surprising, but it's true. It may be toxic to livestock, deer, and other browsing animals. The other animals, they avoid this for that reason, which increases the grazing pressure on more platable native plants especially since there are more vines than there are normal native plants, killing off and putting more pressure on the natural native plants. The vine threatens modern butterflies, a species risk in Ontario. The butterflies lay their eggs on the plant, but the larvae are unable to complete their life cycle due to the high toxins even more than milkweed. They do not survive, and they die off. Vines occur in several locations, in southern Ontario, southern Quebec, and northeastern parts of the United States. They like growing in ravines, hillsides, waste areas, fence lines, and hedges. They also prefer moist, damp climates with a fair amount of warmth, around 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. Here's a bit of history on this vine. It was introduced to the northeastern part of the United States in the mid-1800s for use in gardens, and in recent years, these perennial vines have spread rapidly throughout the central and southern Ontario. Ways that you can stop the spread, there's multiple, but these five usually do the trick. Learn how to identify what vine it is, if it is invasive or not, and how to effectively move it or dispose of it. Avoid using invasive plants in your garden and in landscaping. 
buy native or non-invasive plants from a reputable garden supplier. Native plants provide a habitat and food sources for native wildlife. Dispose of invasive plants in the garbage. Do not put them in your compost or discard them in a natural area. It will only cause them to spread more. Discard any flowers or seeds that you may have too. When hiking, prevent the spread of invasive plants by staying on the trails, keeping your pets on a leash, and cleaning off your boots once you get back to your car or to your house. And that's all for today. Thanks for the views, make sure you like it, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.